Hi everyone and welcome back to another Intro to Signals and Systems video. Today's topic is how to compute the output of a discrete time LTI system when the input is equal to something that looks like a to the n for all n. Okay, let's consider this example problem. So in this problem we're given that we have an LTI system that has this impulse response. So h of n looks like this. And our goal is to find the output when the input is x of n equal a half to the n for all n. So this is the specific example that we're considering. Now there are a couple ways to solve this problem, but for today what we're going to consider is the way to solve it using the difference equation associated with this system. So what we have to do is look at uh, the impulse response first and then figure out the difference, response, difference equation associated with that impulse response. So let's first look at h of n, the definition of h of n given up here. So it's a third to the n times u of n minus u of n minus 2. Well, u of n is the unit step sequence, so u of n minus u of n minus 2 is simply 1 for 0 and 1 and 0 everywhere else. So we can draw h of n is going to look like this. It's going to look like a third to the 0, which is 1, times a third to the 1 at 1, and then 0 everywhere else. So we can basically just read off the impulse response um, given, read off the points of the impulse response given the equation for the impulse response. Um, and again, um, that's because this term here is only non-zero at zero and one, okay? Um, at two it goes to zero because at two we have u of two, which is one, minus u of um, two minus two, which is also one, so that goes to zero. All right, so this is our impulse response. Um, this is a finite impulse response system, right? This is an FIR system. It's an FIR system, okay? And um, so we can immediately associate um, the values of the impulse response here with the um, coefficients of a difference equation. So we can easily say that this system is represented by a difference equation that looks like x of n plus one-third x of n minus one. And if we go ahead and just plug back into this to compute the impulse response of this system, remember the impulse response is the output of the system when the input is delta of n, we would get delta of n plus one-third delta of n minus one, and that's exactly this h of n function um, that we got here. All right, so now we have a difference equation, and given the difference equation and the input, it's trivial to calculate the output. So we can easily write y of n is equal to, well, it'll be a half to the n, because that's x of n, plus one-third times a half to the n minus one, because that's shifted by one. Uh, and this is a three here. Well, let me erase that, fix it. Um, so that's a one-third. Okay. Um, so we now have a final answer. We could rearrange it a little bit by pulling out a factor of a half. So we could pull out a half to the n, and we're left with 1 plus 1 third times 1 half to the minus 1. Okay, so this is what happens um, to this equation when I pull out a half to the n. And now I can just rearrange this because 1 half to the minus 1 is 2. Um, so I can rewrite this. This will be a half to the n times uh, 1 plus 2 thirds, or that's a half to the n times 5 thirds. I'm having difficulty drawing threes today, so that's a three. Okay. So this is our final answer here um, to what is the output of, a, of an LTI system 
with this impulse response when the input is a half to the n for all n. This is the output. Now, a couple of things that we can notice about this. One, we notice we put in a half to the n, and we got out a half to the n scaled by a constant. And that is not an accident. It turns out that a half to the n is an eigenfunction of an LTI system. So um, when we put in an eigenfunction to the system, we should get out that same eigenfunction scaled by a constant. So that's not unexpected. If you go on in signals and systems, you'll realize that this um, constant is related to uh, the Z transform. So if we go on to calculate the Z transform, we can easily calculate this constant. But um, this is uh, a way to generate the answer to this problem without having to go through the Z transform. Okay, so that finishes up today's video. It was made for the ECE 201 course at George Mason University. If you want to find out more about uh, Mason or the School of Engineering or the ECE department or me, you can check out these websites. Thanks for listening.